Good morning. Such good songs come on right when I turn on the camera. <laughs> what are you doing this morning? Good. Hope everybody's having a good Tuesday. I feel like it's Monday, which isn't always a great feeling, but um, yeah. Hope everybody has a great having a great day so far. Today we're going to do a cute little spider web from Kaleidocuts in this cutter. So cute. Um, again, possibilities for making it all sorts of different colors and all the things um, to match any sort of like Halloween themed set that you have going on. Um, so today we're going to do the spider web. Tomorrow we're going to do the cute little spider that goes along with it. So um, yes, yeah, so cute. Um, the camera is showing this like yellowy green. This is a lime green. I'm not real sure why the camera's not showing that, but really fun lime green. I've already flooded the background. This is going to be, you know, kind of a see-through-ish, more see-through-ish design. So it's lime green and it's already dry. And you can see I've already drawn on the lines. I just used a ruler and my scribe, just used the edge of my scribe and just traced in there. So they're a little bit straighter. Um, so yeah, and I did mark up some places where I want the spiders to go. That's just for my own eyes um, to do. So I wanted to use a little bit of sprinkles on these. Um, sprinkles is another way that you can kind of help with craters. I have seen craters happen with sprinkles, but you have a little bit less chance of them happening. And since this is a dry cookie, um, I'm going to I'm going to do all the things to avoid craters. Like I'm going to use detail glaze for the spider web. I'm going to use detail glaze for the spiders um, and then I'm going to use sprinkles. So all of those things are going to help because this is already dry. Good morning, Jan. Um, so yeah, so we have a couple of sprinkles that we're going to use. I'm just going to use some white non pearls when I pipe on the spider web and just put a few in. I just kind of want it to look maybe like there were water droplets on the spider web. And then I have some black sanding sugar. And then this is um, Sugar Art Diamond Dust. And it's that pretty pink color. And I just wanted to kind of mix it into the black sanding sugar. You're probably not going to see it on screen. Um, but I just wanted to give my sanding sugar a little bit of oh, glitter, a little bit of fun. There's a chunk of sanding sugar I can... I feel it right there. Get off it. So I like to make sure, I don't know about you guys, but sanding sugar tends to get, sometimes it gets these clumps in it and then you don't want those on your spider. So you can add as much glitter as you want. If you want it really glittery, you're going to add a lot. Um, I'm just looking for a little bit of shine. I don't know if I don't know if that would be enough. Sorry. I'm, of course, right when I go live is when everybody decides to text me everything. <laughs> so. Okay. So we're going to stir this around again. I just wanted a little bit more glittery. You can always use just clear if you have like their diamond dust, their original color. Um, you could definitely use that. I'm just, I like the, the red, the like pinkness of it. So, and the glitter, when you do it like this, <clears throat> the glitter is going to fall to the bottom because it's thinner than the sanding sugar. So it's going to fall to the bottom. So I'm stirring it just so that it's not a one clump. But when I go to use it, the sanding sugar will fall first and hit the icing. And then that glitter will fill in any space that the sanding sugar doesn't hit. So I I kind of am okay with how that, if you want it to really be shaken up, I would put it in a, like a little mason jar or something, shake it up before you sprinkle it on. And that would work a little better. I have, uh, I feel like I have glitter in my throat. <laughs> All right. So thinking about this cookie, if we're going to use sprinkles, we have to do those things first because there's no way to avoid sprinkles getting on certain places. The white non pearls are going to be just lightly put on. So those, I'll, those I'm not too concerned with. It's the sanding sugar that I know I have to do first in order to 
uh, be able, you know, to make sure that it goes in that area, right? So I'm going to do the spiders first, which really normally isn't my like first way I would do things. I would definitely be doing it a little bit different, but that's okay. Um, sometimes we have to do things a little backwards, sideways, whatever. Um, so, and I'm looking at my little picture here. The spiders don't take up the whole little bubble here. They just take up a little bit of it. And then I'll put the legs on afterwards. So I do want to like make sure that my spiders and also make sure my spiders cover up most of the area, but leave room for the legs. Also, if you want perfect spiders, then uh, perfect circles, then I would go ahead and trace those as well. Um, I'm not too concerned. It's a spider. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I'm going to fill it with regular glaze because I'm using sanding sugar and all that. I'm going to just fill it with regular glaze. I am going to kind of overfill it a little bit, not a whole, whole lot. I just want to overfill it a tad so that hopefully it will just So you can see that that pink sanding sugar kind of go there. And then I'm just going to take my paintbrush and I'm just going to dust off some of that glitter that's on here. And I want to try to dust off any sanding sugar that's around the edges. This will make putting those legs on easier. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So let's go next spider. I'm going to go here. Next spider. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger this way. Okay. If you really wanted to make it nice and poofy, you could do a double outline, um, you know, one on top of another. Um, and then that way you can go a little bit higher with your icing. But since we've got sanding sugar going, Sanding sugar for me always tends to flatten out a cookie or flatten out a shape. Um, I think it just weighs a lot, so it just tends to flatten it out a little bit. So that's pretty. I want got a lot more of the glitter on it and not so much of the sanding sugar. That's okay. Okay. So I'm going to dump all this back in here real quick. And a lot of the time on this sprinkle tray, you guys can see, it sticks, right? I know, isn't the cutter so cute? So I just take my paintbrush and I just kind of dust it back on there. You're not going to get it all in there. Just, I have learned with glitter that it just, you're going to lose a lot of it because it sticks to everything. It sticks to your hands. It sticks to your sprinkle tray. It sticks to the, the like, the desk. At least for me, it does. Oh, you want to be hard to use them. Huh? Okay. Well, that is one <laughs> crooked, crooked spider. It's going to turn out the same way, so I'm not too concerned. All right. Fill this one. Again, I'm doing this part first so that I don't get sprinkles and glitter everywhere. I'm able to wipe it off. I had to wait till this cookie was dry. So that's why, you know, that's why it's dry. Uh, normally, like we've talked about before over the past few days, like normally you want to work with glaze in a two hour increment. Can't really do that when you want to put sprinkles. Ooh. You can't do that when you want to put sprinkles on. I hate when the cookie like breaks off and then you get like little cookie things in your, see there. <laughs> Your little cookie things in your sprinkles, and I hate that. I hate it. All right. So we're going to put this on here. I'm going to make this spider a little bit smaller. They don't all have to be the same size. Could have done the spiders in different colors as well. Could have done the spiders in purple. Um, you could do the spiders in totally purple glitter if you didn't want to, you know, 
if you don't want to use sanding sugar at all, you could definitely use just glitter. That would be so cute and so sparkly. Just realized why there's cookie pieces I get to my sanding sugars because I do that because I tap on the cookie and it falls off. That's my own, my own fault. I just watched it happen. Okay. Let me put this back because I do need, oh, I guess I don't need it. I can clean it up here in a minute. I clean it up here in a minute. Okay. So now, see what I tell you? You get just glitter diva spiders for sure. There's some diva spiders for sure. All right. So you can add the legs. I'm going to give it just a second just so that that can kind of set up before I start to add this, before I start to add the legs. Um, but I am going to go ahead and do the spider web. And I'm kind of debating on whether I want to do the spider web. I'll do it in detail glaze. It'll be fine. Okay. So I'm going to use detail glaze. The only thing with detail glaze and sprinkles is you just need to make sure, I just have to make sure that I do the sprinkles like when I do each line because detail glaze can't, for me, tends to crust up pretty quickly. Um, so that's why I'm almost tempted to use regular glaze for the, okay, I'm going to use regular glaze for the first part of the spider web. So then I'm just going to put some on here. They don't stick. They don't stick. That's fine. I'm just going with the like, yep. I'm just looking for kind of that look, just the kind of messy look, All right? So we're going to go here. And then I'm going to go here. And if you have to, like right here, this stuff is kind of in the way. So I'm going to carefully kind of move some of them to the side. Yeah. Okay. That's not where I wanted that to go. Okay. What on that one? You can kind of put it where you want it to. Um, I try not to get too many just because I still have to put the like the in between. Like, I don't know. I guess it's just spider web. I wouldn't necessarily like connectors from the spider web. So I don't want to get too many. I may actually have too many on here now. Um, but it's okay. I'll just make sure to connect them where they aren't. And maybe I'll try to just pick up the ones and put them on the top of the spider web. And you could have waited. It just doesn't, I think the detail glaze would have dried a little too fast. So, so I'll just kind of push them up to the top. I can always flip them back over once I get the connectors in the connectors okay so now i'm just going to do the connectors this is just the spider web the part of the web that kind of is a really drawn out view um or and you can do them straight to do a curve like this you can also do them in various places you don't have to do them all concentrically Spider webs are not normally done concentrically. So I'm just using these connectors to create the spider web. Hehe. <laughs> so cute. And only put a few connectors if you wanted to. You don't have to do this many. Totally up to you. What I love about this cutter, it's very versatile with whatever you want to do with it. 
All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I think all my little water droplets are okay. If you wanted to add more, you could. I don't think they'll stick to the detail glue. You're gonna have to, if you want them to stick, you're gonna have to like do that. You're gonna have to put them on. So you can definitely do that. If you wanted to do a few, you could totally do that. Okay. So then we have to do our legs and then I'll do the like the spider spindle or the little web coming down. I'm just kind of connecting these to the sometimes detail glaze wants to hang up on top and I'm just going to use the paintbrush that I've been using to just kind of basically kind of push it down onto the cookie. I do want it to connect to that icing, right? Yes. All right. Spiders have eight legs. So here we go. If you wanted to, you could put eyes on these spiders. I'm not going to put eyes on the spiders. They're just going to be spiders because tomorrow we're going to make another spider. And you can use your scribe to kind of help you connect it to the um, actual spider. But you should be able to kind of touch your bag to the spider. Thank you, dear. And this is so fun. I feel like you could also use this cutter in the holidays at Christmas time um, to use it. Like, I don't know what you could put here, maybe some mistletoe, maybe just a pretty little like holiday arrangement and then have the things hanging down be like ornaments or bells. Um, I think that would be really cute. I'm always trying to think of ways that I can use, you know, cutters for other, other holidays because we all know we buy a lot of cutters, so being able to use them multiple times is always a plus, right? So, <laughs> look at those spiders. Those silly spiders. Whoop, that didn't work. You can make them have crooked legs if you wanted to, like the L-shaped legs if you wanted to instead. Sometimes I like spiders with those legs. But these will be just fine. I feel like this cookie has a lot going on. So adding more detail just kind of takes away from the cookie a little bit, right? So cute. Now I could use just regular glaze to do their, their like drop down uh, webs. It's because we're not doing anything crazy with them. If that makes sense. I'm not this is all pretty much dry and I think I'm going to do these up here. Oh, that's so cute, Jan. That's such a cute idea as I spun it, as I spun it around. That's such a great idea. And I'm just going to connect this one to that. Basically it was just hanging off of that one. But how cute, how cute my little spiders. They're all just waiting and hanging. And tomorrow we'll create the other little spider that goes along with it. So that could be the mama spider and these could be all the babies. So how cute is that? Adorable. Love this cutter. Such a great idea, Jan. Thanks for that idea. Um, it's always good to, or maybe a little tip. Whenever I get cutters, I have these papers. I have one right here. It has some sensitive information, but I won't show that side. So I buy these dotted index cards. I think I got them off of Amazon. And I will take my cutter and I will trace it. Usually you can fit two, usually. You can fit two of the same cutter traced on here. So I will trace it on here. And then I will draw what the original is. And then I can draw any other ideas that I have for that cutter like Jan's idea or my idea of the 
the ornaments hanging down and you can flip it over and it's also the same on the other side and you can do the same. So you can put four different ones um, in that section or in that card. And then I just put that card in with my cutters. So whatever tub my cutters are in, whatever tub this cutter is in, I will put that card in there. And then if I, I mean, we all tend to remember a lot of the things that we buy, right? So I will think, you know what? I had a spider cutter or a spider web cutter that I know I was going to turn into something for Christmas. And I usually can find it on that card. So that's just one way that I do. I know a lot of other people will use like Ziploc bags and they will put the cutters in there with all of the different ideas that they have. Um, I don't have enough room for all that. I just have mine in tubs and it just works really well to have those. You could also just organize those cards in like an alphabetical like recipe box. And you could put them filed under whatever their original cutter was designed for. So spiderweb, I would put it behind the S. And then you could pull that out and be like, yeah, this is a Halloween cutter. You could even write on the card like where it's at. It's in your Halloween tub or it's in your fantasy tub or it's in your rectangles tub. Um, you could put it you know, that kind of, you could write down where it's at and have it be a little bit more organized. But that's just an idea for those of you that are maybe trying to get organized or trying to remember what your cutters were designed for. Um, Cause I know, especially with sometimes with cutters like this, I know this has happened to me with Judith at Sweet Design Shop. Obviously cutter people, rotate cutters so often and they have they will have to but they put out new cutters every holiday so at some point they're going to get rid of something that you've bought and then it's really hard to find the image of that cutter of what you bought so that's why i started doing what i what i do with those cards because i i had so many cutters not so many but quite a few cutters that i just don't have an image for anymore and I had to recreate it basically on my own, which sometimes isn't hard, but it's nice to have that original and be like, oh yeah, this, especially when you have like word, uh, word cutters that have words that go with them. If you did it by the stencil that went with it and they get rid of that cutter and they no longer have the image, um, you have to create it basically on your own. And Sometimes that's a booger. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a fun one. Tomorrow we'll do the little spider to go along with it. And it will be Wednesday. We'll be halfway through the week. Holy cow. Holy moly. Holy moly. So I hope you guys have a great Tuesday. I hope it's nice and cool where you are. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye, guys.